OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So, our agenda for today, this is my thinking. Um, we're gonna work, we're gonna try this and work through it. I'm going to show you um, about how to make a custom thumb. A thumbnail is that, that little card at the very beginning of your video. That's what people will see when you, they get to your channel. Um, it's not part of your video per se. It's just the, the cover. It's like the cover of the book. We're going to talk about subtitles. I know I've talked about it for the last two sessions and I've never had a chance to do it. So I put it at the top this time so that we can actually go through and practice how to make subtitles and also discuss the difference between subtitles and closed captioning. We'll talk about your channels, um, how to incorporate other people's channels into your channel, and um, and then at, toward the end, um, we might have time, I'm not sure, to get to sections and playlists. And if we do, then I, this is definitely where I'm going to have uh, Jennifer or Marjorie help me out um, to explain this because I was having a little bit of difficulty on my particular YouTube channel. And we think, we kind of talked it out that there, there's a reason for that. And so um, when we get to the end of the session, um, we'll talk about sections and playlists if there's time, okay? All right, so you know me, love my polls. It's the same poll we've done for the last three sessions. So um, if Melinda can put the poll up, it really is very simple. It's, do you have a YouTube channel? So I still wanna, after three sessions, I wanna get a feel for the room, see who still, you know, who still does not have a channel, and that's okay if you don't. If you don't have a channel, you're gonna be kind of just sitting and watching for the most part because um, it's gonna be too difficult for you to try to create an account while we're doing all these other things. So, and that's okay, just go ahead and watch and absorb. And then for everybody else who has built a channel and maybe has kind of played with it over the past week, which I'm hoping that you have, then, following along today may not be so painful. So let's go ahead and give maybe a couple seconds <laughs> or not. <laughs> and let's take a look at the results. Let's see what we've got. The results, Melinda? Here we go. Oh, it's half and half. 51% uh, yes and 49% no. So <laughs> um, at least we don't have any more what's that. So that's pretty nice. So again, it's, it's pretty interesting. I, I like to take this poll because I like to see, I, got, I like to feel the room and see where we're at. So half of you that are here today that took the poll uh, don't even have a channel. So um, a lot of it is you're just gonna kind of be watching and taking notes about thinking about creating a channel and then going back and go to session one and two and look at the handouts to, um, it, you know, if you're interested in actually creating them. Some of you may just be here just to see if maybe if you're interested or not. All right, if you could in the chat, um, can, for those of you who do have a channel, what kinds of videos have you been uploading to your channel? So that means maybe your, you know, channel uh, videos that you've personally made or videos that you've gotten from other people. Let's see how you guys, what you guys are writing for that. Personal videos, good. Videos that you've made. So uh, some of you guys, maybe you've been to my Screencastify and maybe you've been using Screencastify to create videos and then you can upload it straight into YouTube. That would be, um, that would be a very easy process. Um, some of you are doing it from other people. So you you go to other people's channels and you say, hey, that's a really good video. I like it, I'm gonna put it on my channel. And it could be a combination of both. Educational videos from other people. Good. Tutorials that you've made. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, privacy, privacy is a big thing. Um, privacy issues, you know, is a big thing. You know, whether you're getting videos from other people or you're creating your own about who has access to them. 
So there is a question out there. Jennifer is asking what software people are, what, what software are you using to create your videos? So I've told this story before when I first started and I was just trying to connect, I was using my phone. I literally just took my phone and instead of making a selfie picture, I was using selfie videos. And then I, I created my channel very quickly. And then I was just uploading them as quick as I could. Um, now I use Screencastify primarily, um, unless I'm out and about. Um, if I'm out, you know, doing something and I think, oh, this might be a good, you know, video for my students just as a teachable moment, then I'll whip out my phone again. A lot of you guys are using uh, phone. Jacqueline uses Screencastify. Yeah, so I think it really just depends on the um, purpose and and whatnot, you know, of, as far as what kind of videos you're making. Screencast-O-Matic, perfect. Same, same idea as Screencastify. I think it's Melinda who's writing. There's, you know, all the different tools. There's Screencastify, Awesome Screen Recorder, TechSmith, Camtasia. Uh, Carol says Movavi Video Suite and Photoshop. Yeah, see, those are just like way beyond me. I, I, literally before we had COVID, I was not interested in making videos. I did tutorials on my computer um, with, uh, the smart because we had smart boards so i used smart tech i had the smart software but i was never using like videos that i was in and so um uh yeah so making videos was not a priority for me at all now that we're remote I, it's just such a, a useful tool that my students really appreciate and and can use pretty student friendly all right and we have one more so Let's take a, I just want to find out what channels have you added to your channel, if you have, or what channels would you be interested in adding? Um, maybe what kinds, or, you know, we can feed off of each other. Maybe some people have some ideas of some good channels for us to share um, with the adult ed world. Jennifer's is Mark Kulik. I say Jennifer's, uh, the US Citizen Pod um, is pronunciations. Ventures. Yeah, these are great. I mean, this could be your resource right now. Um, everybody with, I almost called you students, which is so weird. Um, <laughs> OTAN, yay, look at me, good job. You win the prize, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Um, yeah, there's so many, there are so many channels out there. I, I was gonna give you the, the exact number, I looked it up and, and I forgot, but I mean, there are so many channels out there um, that you can use. So please, you know, go ahead and start making some notes in, from the chat you know, so getting some ideas of, of what kind of channels you would like. So uh, as I've been processing with this whole, um, these webinars, I've been, you know, I created that one YouTube channel just for these sessions, but I was starting to work with a channel that was geared toward teachers, but I actually wanted to do a channel that's geared toward my students. And so I, I've been con kind of conflicted about um, the kinds of, channels and things that I want to add to my to my channel. All right, so for those of you that maybe have missed the first two sessions or, you know, just as a quick reminder, um, these are some of the things that you might want to think about while you're creating your channel. If you haven't done it yet, if you haven't created a channel yet or you have created a channel, but you haven't done some of these things, take note, um, you know, because these, these are these are the things that are going to make your YouTube channel pop. So the welcome video, these are, this is the very first thing that people will see when you, when they open up your channel. So a video will pop up automatically for anybody who's not subscribed. Um, and these are how you do it. Go to your channel, customize channel for new visitors, upload a short video about your channel. So these are kind of the step by steps for that. Um, an updated video, these are, this is what pops up when, it doesn't pop up automatically like the welcome, but this is for people who, find, who subscribe to your channel. Now when they go back to your channel, they'll get a different video. They won't get that welcome anymore. It'll still, the welcome will still be there, but it won't automatically turn up anymore. And so this is something that you might want to think about um, that you update regularly, maybe weekly or, you know, twice a month or something to, to kind of tease the, your audience 
what's going to be available, what's coming up, or maybe what just can, you know what you just put on there. So what's new? So these are two different things: ones for new uh, visitors, and then ones for subscribers. So the custom thumbnail, we talked about this before when we were talking about how a YouTube channel looks. And, you know, I was very honest with you when I first started doing it, it was literally I was throwing all the videos up there. I had no care in the world about what they looked like when students looked at my channel. It was just get to the video, go. And um, now that I've had time and, you know, now that I've been working on these sessions, um, I'm thinking I'm looking at other people's channels thinking, man, those ones look really good. <laughs> and so, um, you know, having that kind of cover card or um, something that looks uniformed or I, I you know if you go to like um, cooking channels like especially people who do a lot of recipes and stuff you'll always see these really beautiful pictures of the food and it just it really makes it look special and it, and it does it makes it look professional and so these are the things that you might want to think about when you're creating your channel and you're uploading your videos you know it depends on what your purpose is but but at the same time if it doesn't really take a lot of effort at the same time putting your videos up add a little thumbnail to the beginning of your so then it looks good and then and you know people will appreciate it and you'll 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 take more pride into it so these are some of the things of why you would want to make a custom thumbnail uh, keep in mind it must be under two megabytes so it promotes your video it promotes your channel it directs people to a verified site so sometimes like it'll say you know if you like this then you might like these too and then you know you can direct them to someplace else and then some people use um, thumbnails also to donate to charities so a lot of times, you know, especially now, they, you know, it depends on what the purpose of the channel is, but they can ask their viewers to donate it, but it's only based on the United, you know, the US. But for me, I mean, that the, the last couple of them don't really apply for me because that's not the purpose of my channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I'm going to stop, um, I'm going to get out of my presentation and let's go ahead and take a look at some thumbnails. Okay, so <laughs> let me see if I wrote this down. Okay, so it's a little bit smaller because I went out of uh, presentation mode, but to create your thumbnail, you can do a few things. You can take selfies of yourself. You can take screenshots of video clips. Maybe you have your video click and video your video and YouTube gives you like three selections and sometimes they're not very good ones and so you're like oh I don't like any of those and so you can create your own so you can go through your video and take a screenshot of your video of a of a place a frame of your video that you really like and then you can use that you can use graphics and then you can also use a logo uh, so for example like maybe your school you know your school logo or something but again um, I've talked about this last time too. be very very careful when you're using anything affiliated with your school that your your district your district needs to know about it at least in my case and I'm sure it's probably the true for most districts is that you need to be careful because especially if you're affiliated with a K through 12 um, anything associated with your district needs to be approved so um, you know I I don't even know if I have the name of my school on there. I just have my room number and, you know, so it doesn't really say anything about my school, but sometimes I mention my school. So, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't put on my logo. And like I made the example last week too, even if, because I'm doing this for OTAN, I would never use OTAN's logo or anything on my YouTube channel without their permission. So just be careful with that, you know, just have a conversation with your director or, you know, uh, send an email out to the IT department, things like that. Like, what is the, what are the, what's the policy on using the school logos on your YouTube channel? Because our district has their own YouTube channel. So uh, it's not like I'm trying to represent my district. So the first ones I was gonna tell you is about, okay, I know I'm getting very hot in my face right now because I'm a little bit embarrassed because I, um, I made some, <laughs> I made some homemade cards just to practice and the, literally this is at five o'clock in the morning uh, last week and um, on a couple of different days and I just wanted to see how the process was but I would definitely I'm going to show you what they look like and and I believe me I'm embarrassed as is all as all but 
I just want to give you an idea <laughs> of what you can do or what you should do if you want to make these kinds of cards. And I would definitely be mindful of a few things. Um, don't wear a shirt that has any kind of logo or anything on it because it just it's a distraction. So maybe wear a, a either like a floral print or or just a solid color. Make sure your lighting is pretty nice. And then you know if you want to if you, if this is going to be the face of your videos, you know maybe take a shower and <laughs> do your hair. I don't know. These were not things that I had done. So that's why I kind of give you these little uh, tips. So let me show you <laughs> what I did. <laughs> and um, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to present this. Can we see, can you see where says Elisa's video of the day? Melinda? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I went on to slides to Google Slides and I made a bunch of slides. And so this one I actually made just recently because I thought, oh my gosh, all the ones with my photo in it are just ridiculous. So I thought maybe I should have something that's kind of generic that has nothing with no picture or anything on it. And this could be um, the cover of my videos and each topic could be a different topic. So for example, we were in uh, Ventures um, Unit 9. I think. And, um, you know, we did, a, we did some videos on housework. So, you know, this could be the topic, then I could just change this every time. So per um, all about me, or shopping, or, you know, whatever the topic is for those videos, then I could make this as the generic cover. Um, okay, so again, again, I'm telling you, five o'clock in the morning, lighting's terrible. I've got a treadmill in the background. Of course, I would never use this for my videos for, for the real life, um, but just an idea of what you could do. So I took some video, I took some, yeah, I took a screencast. I used Screencastify and made a video. And what I did was I literally sat in front of my camera and I posed. I did these little Vogue poses for a few seconds and I just switched them up, like just whatever I can think of, like this, the hammier, the better. And then I went back and I took screenshots of little frames that I liked, well, quote unquote liked. And then on Google Slides, I made the you know, the good mornings or whatever. So again, this is not, this is just an idea. <laughs> this is not an example of what you should do. It's probably an example of what you should not do. So again, so then, <laughs> so this is me, you know, you're just, and it's literally so cammy and so, so hammy and, and just, you feel ridiculous doing it, but if it was right, I mean, these are, could come out to be really, really good. So if you're in front of a plain um, wall, or something, you know, when you make these little shout outs, um, you know, make them colorful and bright and make them big. Um, you always want to use big font sizes because some of you today that know if you're using your phone, which most of our students are, you know, everything is is so small and so to make it bigger it helps them so it doesn't have to be very you know a lot very wordy or anything but just you know colorful and big and bold um, would be better so <laughs> again these are like just some ideas of just get your wheels spinning a little bit of some face cards that you can make oh no <laughs> on uh, you know how to introduce your videos <laughs> okay and uh, you know so crazy. Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right. So um, that's that's what you want to do when you're creating your thumbnails. Like those are the things that you want to be thinking of. And again, it doesn't even have to be that uh, eccentric or anything. It could be just a, a screenshot of just the beginning of your sh of your video. Um, all right. So when you oh sorry, I'm going to go back to this. Okay. So when you are in your um, channel and you're uploading a video, when you get to the part, let's see if I can do this. I'm hoping that it's going to work. I'm going to select a video. Okay. Okay. So when you're creating so I uploaded a video I just found one that was on my desktop and I added it 
here and it's thinking, it's processing. Okay, you can tell that it hasn't processed yet because you don't have, you won't see anything here and you won't see anything here. When it's processed, then you'll you'll see the video, at least part of it, and then you'll, and then right here it'll tell you, it's telling you it's processing. So you can, you know, title your video, make a description of it. This is a video of my boyfriend making bread. He was making some baguettes. And okay, so now it's starting to process. So unfortunately, it's taking a long time. So they will give you three options and they just kind of pick and choose like three frames from your video and say, hey, you know, do you like any of these? You can use them or you can actually upload a thumbnail. Now, when you're creating your channel, if you don't have this option, it's because you haven't verified your account. So remember last week when we went back through and we verified our accounts, um, if you don't verify it, you can still upload videos and stuff. I did for a long time. I, I for months, I didn't verify and I, I never had this. And I thought maybe it was because I didn't have enough subscribers or I didn't have my channel up long enough. It was only because I didn't verify my account. Once that happens, oh no. <laughs> oh, I already have this video uploaded, so it's saying I can't do it again. But so again, you can see the three um, thumbnails that they choose for me, and I could choose any one of those. If not, you can upload your own thumbnail here, and that's where you would do it. You would click on there, and then you would upload the picture that you would like on your the face of your video. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so let's talk about subtitles. Um, so, the difference between subtitles and closed captioning, um, can, do you guys know the difference or you want to put it in the chat, maybe, some of you? No idea. I love it. Good. Me too. I didn't really have an idea either when I first started doing this. Um, so, closed captioning, what that is is for um, people who have uh, auditory challenges, okay? And so what it does is it not only takes all the words that are said, but also sounds. So car honking or music playing or, you know, things like that. It, it does all of it. So that someone who is deaf um, can read what's happening as the video is going on. Subtitles are mainly used for people who um, who can hear but have but need to read the language. So for ESL students, it's perfect. They can hear. They have they have they're fine auditorily, but they still read the subtitles because their love their English language level or whatever language level is um, may not be up to par, and so. That's kind of the difference. So when you upload a video into YouTube, it automatically does closed captioning. It, it's by law. You, they must do closed captioning. What happens, though, is that there are no capitals. There's no periods. There's no grammar. It's not separated. It's just literally da 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 It just goes on and on and on and on. Subtitles are something that you can provide so that it plays when your video plays, but it has the comma. I mean, it has the capitals, it has the periods, it has, you know, spelling, and, and, it, and it's exactly, the words are exactly as said. In closed captioning, they try to do as best as they can, but even for like my, our, our videos, um, it, it, they didn't quite get it right. So um, it's a good idea just to have the subtitles in there anyways. So when you do subtitles, okay, I have been struggling with this since the very beginning because I didn't even know that that subtitles were available when I first started throwing videos up on. I, I was probably I probably had ten videos up before I even realized that I could do subtitles, and then I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing, and it's so much better for my students. Now, here's the catch-22, though, is that sometimes I didn't want my students <laughs> to read. I just wanted them to practice the listening part of it. And so I couldn't control them not getting the subtitles or not. So that was kind of, I was, I was a little bit, um, it was unfortunate <laughs> at that time. So, uh, so let's go ahead and that? take a look at um, Jennifer, how to go ahead and do. Alisa, yeah. Jennifer had a, a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, can you hear me first of all? Yes, now yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the ways that I, uh, I have uh, done that is that 
with, um, I especially try to uh, control the closed captioning because uh, a lot of times I'm, um, when I interview people, um, the or the the translation or the closed captioning of what I say is, is fairly accurate, but the closed captioning of the other speaker is not, not right. okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I've done is that I basically... Jennifer, we're losing your audio. I think it's your... Remember, it's a subtitle that I delete. Yes. Hello? We're kind of losing your video. Connection. We're yeah, we're losing your audio. It's it's like in and out every third word. Okay. So talk slower. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> okay. seriously. So when so what I do is I correct the closed captioning. I save it as American English, and then I delete the original close uh, the uh the original automatic closed caption. So the, you can do this also for speaking exercise if you want to do it that way. The only thing is, is that sometimes the students, when they log in, they don't, they're not used to flipping back between the subtitles and the closed captions. Mm. So that's something that you, uh, that people have to take into consideration. So Jennifer, not to put you on the spot or anything, right. but do you, can, can you share your screen and show your, um, an example of one of your videos? Sure. Do you want to do it now or do you want to do it later? Well, um, I think, let me give you a few, a couple minutes to get set up and then I, we can, we can talk about, I can still keep talking about subtitles. Um, or, okay. Or is that too rushed for you? No, I can, I, I, uh, let's see if, um, can you give me the, give me control of the screen? Yeah, just a second. Do you have the, do you have the it share? Says, it says, wait a minute. Okay. So, um, do you see me now or no? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It says that I cannot, uh, do the, Let's see. Share screen now. Let me try it again. How about now? Yes. Okay, great. So let me go to my YouTube, YouTube studio. And I'm going to go to one that I had not closed. I had not done the translation yet. Uh, yet. This one is my most recent video, What's Happening with USCIS Openings Week uh, 4. Uh, I want to basically go in and take a look at the closed captions. So here's all the different videos that I have. Um, I'm interested in this. Sorry, not, I'm not interested in analytics. I'm interested in this one specifically. I want to edit it. So now I'm going to go to subtitles. And when I go to subtitles, this is the one that has automatically been published. Okay, so that's automatic. Now what I want to do is I basically want to edit that or correct it. Okay, so I'm going to add a language. I'm going to add, I think, American English, I hope. Let's see. Yeah, English, the United States, add a language. And here I can basically go in and add the subtitles. And when I add the subtitles, I'm going to, I can create new subtitles or closed captions, okay? So here I'm going to try to go in and do that, create new subtitles. And here I could basically start typing along with the, the video itself. Oh, this was United Kingdom. So I'm going to delete that draft. I'm going to go back, delete the draft. I want to delete the draft. So here we are with uh, the automatic ones. 
edit. So here it is automatic with the automatic, uh, the closed captions. If I start making, um, if I start making additions to this, I'm going to record. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to take this out. I'm going to say, welcome back, Dr. Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez, and then I would put a period, and then we're going to say we're going to. And what I can do is basically I start adjusting these, uh, these, uh, the, the timing on these uh, different things. So I can move them around, I can make them shorter, I can make it longer, um, adjust them that way. So welcome back, Dr. Hernandez. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I need to make that actually a little bit longer. Now, if I want to basically say, okay, so as you can see, I put made that uh, uh, grammatically correct. What I would basically do is go up to publish edits and when it publishes edits, now the students have an example to choose how to watch this. They can watch things with the automatic, uh, the uh, automatic closed captions, or they can watch a grammatically correct English version, okay? So, and you, they would basically be uh, making this choice in their closed captions. And unfortunately, I have, I have to get out of this screen to basically show you the, the choice, but let's see what happens now. So I, there, I'm able to watch it now in English. A lot of our students, however, have things set up automatically. So if the automatic translation or closed captioning is too bad, I simply go in and delete that. But again, then sometimes students use, uh, lose the ability to automatically have that popped up and they say, hey, what happened to my closed captions? So you have to be really careful on that when you make that choice. Um, I can do a much further de a demonstration about that later, if you wish. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that was a, it gave um, everybody kind of a better idea of how it works on the back end. Because yeah. I know that we've watched videos and, you know, or TV or something. And if you, ha you know, hit the CC button or the closed captioning button, then, you know, we, we understand how it works from a viewer's perspective. But then now right. for us as creators, you know, how does it actually get put in? So that was great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Okay, can you, uh, how do I give the screen back? Oh, I'm going to stop share. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, there you go. Before, okay. I knew that. I knew that. Okay. Before you both pass the baton back and forth, there's a there's a couple of questions in the Q and A. Okay. Um, great. Would you like me to read these Please. or? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I've noticed that there have been times when I'm presenting and I want to play a video that there's no sound, just like the video we couldn't hear here. <laughs> So we'll get uh, to that, I, Olivia. Hang on, hang on. It's the next question. What level of ESL is this lesson geared toward? Do you have to review the closed caption for every video? Um, when they do closed caption, they simply basically um, try to show in English what they think the speaker is saying. Now, the video that I just showed you is for my citizenship students, which are multi, multi uh, multiple English levels. Um, when, uh, and the reason why I basically retain the original closed captions is because both of us spoke very clearly, okay? You don't have all the periods and everything like that, but it was clear enough for the basic, uh, basic viewer to figure out what's going on. When I do things on a single topic by myself, because I have a tendency to stutter, or excuse me, stammer, I actually go in and really clean up some of that, uh, clean up some of that uh, grammar. So um, I'm basically still gearing it towards an accurate representation of what is said, but instead of basically 
uh, getting distracted by, by, by all of my ums and ohs and does and um, multiple repetitions that I make. I'm basically trying to get a straightforward version of what's said. Do you have to consider the language level of the students? Absolutely. And some of the videos that I've also done is I've done uh, in the subtitles, I've done the English version of what's, what I'm saying and I've also done the Spanish version of what is saying, being said. So people can see that at the same time. So there's a lot of possibilities with subtitles and maybe that's something that I can take up a little bit later. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Or even, you know, in the next session, that could be like a main, a yeah. main part of it. Yeah, that would be great. Can I With, uh, say, yeah, can I say one more thing? Sure. Um, a really great way to do your um, first, uh, the um, thumbnails for YouTube is if you use Canva, they have a special uh, format for YouTube thumbnails. Oh, great. And that's that's one of the super easy ways that I've been able to really upgrade my game with thumbnails, except I really like your, your ideas. <laughs> I, I was just saying, what, do you, what about mine? My five o'clock in the morning pictures. I mean, That's come on. Awesome. I've never seen five o'clock. What's it like? So now I know. <laughs> Mick, can you put that in the chat? What you were the, the tool that you were talking about and then uh, yeah, yes and that's another quick uh, demo that i can do next time mm -hmm. or even this time i can show you that but. that would be awesome yeah we'll definitely okay. um try to make time for that then um melinda were there any other questions or should I it. take it away okay let me go ahead and share my screen again let me make sure i'm on the right screen are we all good we can see my presentation yes melinda Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is basically, you know, my version of what Jennifer had just shown. And I'm so glad she did because I was kind of looking over my steps. There was a couple of things that I do a little bit differently. But again, I'm coming from a place where I was literally just thrown into this doing trial and error and kind of survival YouTube. And so this is the way I know how to do it, but I am absolutely certain that there are plenty of other ways to do it. And it's probably more efficient or whatnot, but this is just how I know how to do it. So I will show you what I do when I do subtitles for my students. So um, this is that one that has all the steps in it at one time. And then now we'll go through it uh, step, step by step. All right, so you're going to upload your video Okay, and again, if you don't remember how to do that, always look for the little camera with the plus. If you're on your channel, if you're on youtube.com, um, you know, you can do it either way from that. Once you upload your video, now your video is uploaded, then you're going to go through and um, you know, insert the title, do your description, things like that. Scroll down and then you'll see more options. Okay, so after your video is uploaded, it's now saying, okay, so it's processing. Remember that gray box and there's no thumbnails. So it's processing. So you can put in your title, you can put in your description, you can go down, scroll down, and you'll see more options. Once you hit more options, then this is where you can choose that language that Jennifer was talking about. And this isn't like, a, I, I have found that it's in different places. So even if you're like not sure where I'm at right now. Sometimes when you're just playing around, you're like, oh, here's that, you know, language part and, and it, it shows up. So you're gonna go ahead and make sure that this says um, what the language of the video is. So for us, if we were creating videos, it, unless you're doing them in Spanish, then you would change them. You know, it depends on what the language of the video is. So for me, mine's gonna be English, United States. And then you can also do the recording date and whatnot. So these are, this is just some of the information that you need, but this is kind of important because I found this out um, through trial and error that if you don't have that, then things, bad things happen. I don't know. So, some things can't happen, not bad things happen. So um, if you have a transcript already done, so maybe this is already a scripted video, maybe you know you were creating something with your colleagues and you both had scripts already. If you already have this, the scripts ready, you can upload them. You don't have to retype them again. And so you can upload your subtitles um, from your computer and you can do it with timing or without timing. So probably with timing because then it, it, it kind of goes with the, they have a pretty good, um, 
they 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 have a pretty good system where that they they time it pretty well. I, I I'm pretty impressed with it. There's only a few times where I have to make some adjustments, and you'll see. Uh, I have a video that I did about that. So that this is if you already have your um, if you already have your your transcript ready. If you don't, don't worry, no problem. You're going to continue. And you're going to go into studio. So make sure that you're in studio, whether that, so if you're on your channel and then it says custom channel or uh, studio, pick the studio one. Make sure that you have studio up at the top. Look for the word videos on the left hand side and then choose the video that you want to make your subtitles for so this is exactly what jennifer had just showed us so she was in studio she and she chose that very first one because she knew that she hadn't done subtitles for it yet when you hover over i had to take a picture with my phone because um, i couldn't get a screenshot when i hovered so when you hover over the title you'll see uh, this little floating um, toolbar and the first one is called details Okay, if you're just, uh, if you're off of it, you won't see that, that it'll look like this. As soon as I hovered over the title, this toolbar comes up and I want to go to the one that says details. Okay, so again, here's that language. It's been selected for me. This is the language of my video and I want to add subtitles. So click on add subtitles. And then my video shows up that I chose and you have your choices again. So again, if you, if you make the opportunity to upload, you can still, you know, you can still have your chance to upload if you already have the transcript already on your computer. You can transcribe and auto sync, which is what I always do. I, did, I don't even do this one, but this is the one. So this was great to hear Jennifer say that she does, this is the one she does. But I usually pick transcribe and auto sync because I used to do transcriptions. When I worked in Korea, I used to have to do transcriptions for um, movies. <laughs> and, I, and, and this was VHS days. So I literally had to stop, rewind, listen, type stop, rewind, listen, stop. I mean, it was terrible. YouTube makes it so nice because they can play the video. You can play the video and t as soon as you start typing, the video stops, it pauses. And then when you stop typing, it continues. And so it's really kind of convenient that you don't have to keep doing it manually yourself, like play, rewind, play, rewind. And so that's what I like about it. That's what I, that's what what kind of sold me about doing um, subtitles for all my videos. So um, being mindful, um, make sure that you have this right here uh, checked. Pause video while typing because that's the magic. So while you're typing, that video will pause. It won't keep continuing so you don't have to rewind unless you kind of miss, you know, miss some words or something. But um, but yeah, it's been really, really nice. So you're going to type here and then just make sure that's checked. And I think it's default. So just double check. But I think, you know, you, you won't have to check it yourself. So here's an example of, of me doing this um, with I would screencastified me making the trans uh, the transcript. So I think this will work. Hold on. This door is so wet. Can you hear the sound? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. Oops. Go. Play. It makes it difficult to handle. That's why there's so much. This was my example of after it's done. <laughs> Sorry, I think I mixed up the two. I had two videos. Much flour on it. So this is after I've been typing. So after it's typed, then this is what Jennifer was showing where you can go back and you can make editorial changes to it with timing and things like that. So. I'm going to do is shake it a couple times and stretch it. It makes it difficult to handle. That's why there's so much flour. And so I'm listening to the video. I'm watching what part he's, you know, he's in in the video. And then I'm making my adjustments with the subtitles. Now, for whatever reason, of course, this is going to happen. This dough is so wet. Let me just pause it real quick. Of course, the video that I want to show you as an example was probably the hardest one that I've had to do. Most, like, so far, every video that I've ever had to do, 
I didn't have to do a lot of this right here. It was literally like, it was kind of magic. As soon as I typed it in, they timed it really well. And if there were any mistakes, it was probably just my mistake of, you know, a typo or things like that. But for this particular one, maybe because Larry's talking and, and it, maybe he's talking a little faster than I normally would or whatever, I had to kind of make a little bit adjustments here it's not too bad it is a little tedious or whatnot but it is worth it at the end but for real when i was doing my own videos and transcribing my own videos i rarely had to do any kind of timing issues i don't know why so let me exit out of this and so um let me see if i have another example here and i don't know if that's the one so when we talked about the timings the timings of the videos. So again, this is, I'm typing as the video is playing. And as I'm typing, it stops the video and then I continue. And so then that it keeps going until the end of the video. Oops. Okay. So again, I had a, a typo on there. And so I, I can fix it here or I can also fix it here. So you have multiple places that you can fix things. Okay, so this, I think I mixed up the two slides, sorry. So this is where I am actually doing the transcribing. Let's do it. So wet. Yeah. Is it blurry? Because it's kind of blurry on my end. It's okay. Mm. Alisa, can I say something really quick? Sure. It depends on, I would think also, it depends on the language level of our students that some people, um, you know, trans, uh, basically transcribe or provide closed captions for every single thing that the person says in the video. And some people only put the keywords. I noticed Jennifer ESL does that. Oh, interesting. So you can make a, you have a choice, I think, Legally, we're obligated to provide closed captions mm -hmm. for everything. Right. However, I think it's also really helpful here to put keywords, and you may want to do that with uh, further editing. Interesting. Yeah, I, I never would have thought that. I mean, I, 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 the only things that I omit are my ums. Like if I'm doing my own videos, I, I take out, I don't, I leave out ums or oh or, or, you know, those little pauses in between um, sentences and like just the things that we do, what I do naturally. I take those out because my students don't really need to know that, but, or read it. They hear it, but they don't need to read it. So that's what I will do. So I do kind of take executive you know, privilege in, in some of the things that I, I um, type up. So that was an example of how, so as I was typing, you notice that the video stopped and then I stopped typing and then the video continued again. All right. Okay, so we know, you know me, I love my stretch times. Alisa, did you bring any uh, bread samples? <laughs> it's all in my belly. <laughs> oh, I know it's unfortunate. I, I it really is unfortunate to live with someone who loves to bake and cook and guess this COVID nineteen thing is really killing me. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's keep it moving. So we talked about this last I had to I had to get it in my head what YouTube was about because it really can be a little bit confusing and, and before when I was just a viewer I, you know, I, none of this even made sense. I didn't even, like, it wasn't even a consideration. I didn't even know that there were different sections of, of a channel and stuff. I was just clicking on all the videos that I wanted to watch. And now as a creator, I look at all these different channels and I think, oh my gosh, look at how amazing these are and, and how do they uh, organize it. And we, last week when I was showing Jennifer's, um, I mean, it's, it's a perfect example, OTAN, perfect example. It, you know, you really have to kind of break it down. And, and as far as the lingo goes, you know, for me, uh, I keep thinking about a library. You know, these are my sections of the library. These are the, you know, the chapter books are the playlists and then the videos are the pages, you know, things like that. Like I, I'm trying to think how is it organized in different ways? 
And so for you as the creator of your channel, you need to kind of think about how do you want to organize your channel. And I've watched plenty of, of YouTube videos on this particular topic. And a lot of people said that that they did it kind of how I did it where, you know, they didn't they didn't do the research first. They really just just opened up a channel and just started putting videos on there and then had to go back later on um, realizing that it was um, just not as organized or as, you know, as, as it could be. And so um, if that's your position right now where you're just trying to, you're just trying to get videos up to your students and stuff, great. Just get the channel up, put your videos on there, you know, share them with your students and that's okay. Um, if you're looking to, you know, profit from this or, you know, really get your channel going so that it's more global, then, you know, you're probably going to want to rethink how you organize it. So channels, adding channels and, and featuring channels. Um, when you go to your YouTube, your YouTube channel, so this is my YouTube channel, you have two sections, one's channels and one's featured channels. And I was thinking about it this morning. It, to me, it kind of seemed like the bookstore now where you have books in the bookstore, but then you have, you know, when you first walk into a bookstore, they have that section that's featured and maybe it's like staff selections or, you know, brand new or, you know, bestseller, things like that. That's kind of what featured channels is, are to me. Like these are the channels that you want to showcase on your channel for others. So whether that be for your students, um, so for OTAN, OTAN's website, their featured channels are CASAS, CalPro, NROC, Lynx, you know, it's all the channels that they feel that are super important for adult educators to have right there up front. So for your students, you know, maybe that's going to be a little bit different for, you know, for citizenship, you know, maybe you're going to have Jennifer's you know, featured channel or, you know, I probably wouldn't put OTAN for my students, you know, because it's more of a teacher resource than a student resource. So again, kind of think about what, what do you want your students to see and have easy access to right up front. And that's what you're going to put um, on your featured channels. So adding channels, when you are on somebody else's YouTube channel, so I'm on OTAN's YouTube channel, you can subscribe to their channel by hitting the subscribe. Once you hit subscribe, it'll show you that you are subscribed and then it'll show you a little bell next to it. If you click on the bell, that will um, give you, no, this is the notification bell. Now, anytime OTAN puts up any kind of new video, you will get notified from that. If you don't click on the bell, then you're just subscribed to the channel and then you would check back every once in a while um, for new content. So it really depends. I think that was one of the questions or one of the concerns maybe in the first session was that they didn't want to keep getting notified every time there was something new. So just keep mindful about the, the bell. There's a bell there. If you don't um, click on that or select it, then you won't get notified. But if you do want to know what's the, you know, the newest, the latest and greatest, then go ahead and hit the notification bell and then you'll, you'll be notified whenever something new comes up on that channel. Um, subscribing. So I subscribed to the OTAN channel and it came up into my subscriptions. Now, as you can see, it's still not on my featured channels. So only Jennifer's is on my featured channels because that was the example that I had used from um, last session or the first session. Oops, I don't know why that was there. So now, when you go to, now you want to add a featured channel, go to customize channel on your, on your channel, customize channel, and you're going to add channels. Okay, so you're going to go to customize channel and then you're going to add a channel. You'll copy and paste the link of that particular channel. You'll add it and then there it is. Okay, so when you subscribe, it goes to here. So I've subscribed to CASAS, but it's still not my featured, but I subscribed to OTAN and then I made them a featured channel and then you hit done. So you have two different sections on, on where you decide. So I think CASAS is really important, but uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna put it in my featured channels, you know, for whatever reason, just a weird example. But for my students, I wouldn't put it in there anyways. Just in case, for whatever reason, if you're, you're like, I'm playing around with these and I'm thinking, oh, I don't want these for my students, you can unsubscribe to channels. So 
when you click on the subscribed button, click on that, it will ask you to, uh, it says, do you really want to unsubscribe? And then you can either say, yes, I do want to unsubscribe, or you can just cancel and say, no, I changed my mind. <sighs> All right, so let's go through and let's see if I can, let's see if we can do this. Now, I was playing with my channel earlier today and so some of the things that I think that I'm having problems with, like why I'm having difficulty sharing certain things with you, is because if you can see all the videos that I've done so far have either been private or unlisted or drafts. And I think that blocks me from like showing you potentially what it's supposed to look like at the end. And that's my fault. So sometimes when I'm trying to show you something and it's not working well, I believe it's because my videos are, and which is an easy fix. You can always just go here and change this. If I put it to public, that means anybody, you know, that's on the internet can potentially see this video if they want. Well, Lisa, okay. how did you get there? Um, this is the studio. This is the studio. So if you're in your channel, let me get back to my channel. So if you're on your channel, you still have your two choices, channel and YouTube studio, and you click on YouTube studio. Oh, what's that? Is that where I was? Yeah. And videos. Okay. So again, remember we talked about the avatars and how they do different things in different places. Uh, I mean, it, literally every single time I go through here, I have to kind of like catch myself because I was like, is this the avatar that I want? Is this the avatar that I want? Um, just to get to different places. And then I did find out on this side, I was always going here and then going to my channel. Um, you know, because that just seemed easiest to me. But, and then also, you know, it just, I, I have to process it differently. So I, I, again, I know that there are probably way easier ways to get to certain places, but I just do what I do. I, I do what I do to survive. <laughs> and so I look here, is it, you know, does this take me where I want to go? Or I look over here, I look over. So this one actually will take me to the studio as well. So if you're a little bit lost, you, could, you go to here, you can click on the studio and you're back here at the studio. And then I clicked on video. This little sidebar over here on the left, this is you know pretty helpful stuff. Studio, remember, is like, this is where you make the magic happen. So a lot of the things that you want to make ha magic happen is on the left-hand side. This is where the subtitles are, your analytics, you know, your data, this is where your playlists are, things like that. So if I click on videos, these, uh, so this is where I try to um, upload that video twice. So it's giving me a warning, like, don't do it when you see it, you know, you already have it on there. So here's my video. I'm going to change it to public. And then I'm going to publish. And now it's public. Anybody can see it. Everyone can see this video. <laughs> it's like, okay. So I, what I've heard from other people is that when you're still editing and doing the things that you want to do with it, keep it private. And then once it's all good, you have your subtitles in, you, you know, you, you've got your title, you, you know, you have your settings all done, then change it to public. But for the purposes of me showing you things, it was, I didn't want to make it public because I didn't want people to see it, but then I couldn't show you. So it was a catch 22 on my part. Now go mm -hmm. back to your channel and show where it appears on your channel. Before we couldn't see it on your channel, but now it's there under uploads. Yeah, so it just, you know, magically, like all of a sudden, oh, it's ready for the world. Here you are. Yeah. And so that's I think. So if um, you did customized channel now, that's where you would start creating your sections. Mm -hmm, exactly. And this was all like, this sounds so natural for Jennifer, like it comes so easily for you. This was hours of painstakingly hours of me trying to figure out where it is that I need to go. So yes, she is correct. You got to customize your channel. And then down here at the bottom is where you add your sections. Okay, so again, sections are, so upload is one of them, and then you can add different sep sections, excuse me, sections. And um, okay, so I did find out, I did find out that if you, if you're here, you go to customize channel and then you look and you're like, Alisa, I don't have this. You're, you know, and you're stuck. I found out that if you go to the little gear right here, gear, 
you need to make sure that this right here is toggled on. Okay, so I believe it's defaulted on, but I'm not too sure because I kind of was playing around with a lot of this stuff and so I might have done it myself. But if you notice, and then save, make sure you save at the bottom. Okay, so if you scrolled, you're at, you're here, you custom, uh, customize your channel, come down here at the very bottom, it should say add a section. If it does not, if it does not say add a section, you're going to go to your gear and make sure that this one right here, customize the layout, is toggled on. All right, folks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, thank, thank you, you Alyssa. Thank you, Jennifer, so much. Yes, our thank you. OTAN subject matter experts. Woohoo!